Welcome to Iceland. We are in southwest Iceland, uh, maybe about 20 to 30 miles south or southwest of Reykjavik, the capital, and maybe, oh boy, about 10 miles or so southeast of the airport Keflavik. This is, um, pardon my pronunciation of the Icelandic language, this is uh, a pretty unique site called Lamba Fjellsha, something like that. Um, but it's basically this, this crack, this, this fissure, if you will, running through uh, these rocks, which we'll spend some time looking at. And um, what's interesting about this, this crack or this fissure that, this, that I'm kind of following here is this is not an eruptive fissure. So this is not the site where lava came up uh, through the rocks erupting at the surface, uh, later forming a dike. Um, and we can tell that because, uh, for one, those types of fissures typically fill in with the eruptive material. And even if they don't, we would expect the walls of this to be coated with uh, smooth or basaltic lava, basically. And what we see here is something a little bit different. I've done a little bit of research on this first time here. And it talks about uh, it cutting through pillow lavas and hyaloclastite, which is basically brecciated volcanic material, which would both be indicative of some sort of lava water interaction. And there are some places, like you can see here, where there are some rounded forms to the basalt. So I do think I've seen a few, enough to convince me anyway, that there are a few pillows in here. But a lot of this is just brecciated, uh, sort of glued together volcanic material, coated with moss and lichen, which makes uh, interpreting it a little bit tricky. So let's go down a little further. And as we go, we can talk and look at any of these rocks that we see in a little bit more detail. So if this is not an eruptive fissure, you might ask yourself, well, how did this form? And your guess is as good as mine, but I would assume based on the orientation of this, it is trending in a sort of south-southwest to north-northeast direction. And that's approximately parallel to the plate boundary. Um, and so my guess is this, this is opened up by extension. Essentially, uh, this isn't the plate boundary, mind you, but this wall to the left has moved that way compared to this one here. So uh, it's, it's a tectonic fissure rather than a eruptive fissure. That would be my hypothesis. And so we've just had separation here that's pulled these two adjacent walls apart. Let me get down to the flat spot here. Um, so that would be my guess as to what we have here. Um, yeah, a little hard to tell. The, the moss and the lichen grows so prolifically on these rocks. When I was up above on top, I did see definite um, uh, volcanic breccia and tuff layers. So what would happen when lava mixed with water is it would be much more explosive. And so you'd get some bedded la layers of tephra or volcanic material. And so I did see that above. Down in here, it seems to be a bit of a mixture of a few pillows here and here and there, but just a lot of brecciated, broken basalt that's some, somewhat glued together. Uh, we'll look back up into the fissure that way. And at this location here, it's maybe uh, about a 80 to 100 feet deep. Uh, and if you look at this on Google Earth, you'll actually be able to see this crack in the earth and be able to see what what it looks like from an aerial view. A little better exposure here. Um, and you can see sort of this brecciated, broken, fragmented, angular particles all glued together. It's incredibly well cemented. There's particles in here that look like they would, you know, come right out, but it's actually very well cemented either by heat or pressure. Um, the rock climber in me thinks that if we could scrub off a lot of this moss and such, we might have ourselves a nice little climbing venue. Um, yeah, so this area here looks highly brecciated. Not seeing any pillows here, but there were some in places back there, at least things that I could talk myself into being pillows. And then the view as we come out, the 
the north end here. Uh, all the moss covering this ah uh -uh lava flow here. I don't know the age of this, these rocks either. Uh, I would guess within the last few thousand years, maybe as much as 10 to 20,000 years for the age of these units. Let's see, here's, uh, I'm not, I don't think that's a pillow. Um, so it's mainly looking like it's brecciated material, um, which could be, again, from either probably a subglacial eruption. I'll do a video on these landforms called Tuyas, which are really interesting landforms you see around lots of Iceland that form when volcanoes erupt beneath a glacier. There's sort of a typical sequence that you get. And one of those rock types that's typical is to have uh, a highly uh, brecciated zone, a volcanic breccia, where the water's interacting with the lava, but there's not much water on top of the lava so that the gases in the lava and the expansion of the water as it flashes to steam can actually drive that eruption, break up the lava, fragment it into pieces, um, and deposit that material on the surface. So we'll just head up this hill for one, one last view from this location. We're also about, I'd guess like maybe four miles from the active eruption site, which I was able to see from the, the tippy top there. Um, this moss is actually pretty interesting here. Um, when you step on it, it's quite spongy, uh, so it cushions the, the walking quite a bit. But you can see it just forms this blanket across this volcanic landscape of moss. Um, just pretty amazing. So this is the, uh, actually we could go up here a little further, and maybe take a look down into the fissure. Nice view over there of the, the walls of the fissure and the broken up brecciated material. But you can actually see the way it's trending across this hill. And then there's a secondary fissure just below me here, trending more or less parallel to it. Might be a pillow there, really smooth surface. Uh, yeah, none of the pillows here really had that classic look to me and I didn't see much, if any, of the pelagonite, which is this yellow alteration material. Might be a little bit um, that often forms when you get these water lava interactions, but I'm no expert. Okay, this is probably a good spot up here. Find a safe place to look down into the fissure from above. And there's it going out to the north, way off in the distance, probably hard to see. Uh, I can see Reykjavik, so I can see some of the buildings out that way. And then almost at 10 minutes here, let's walk a little bit further to the tippy top for one last look. Nice cone over there, that is Kelir, I think that's how you pronounce it. So that's a very prominent landmark in this area. And one more look. Stand over here. Down into the fissure. Up towards the top there. So, a non-eruptive fissure. I won't try to pronounce the name again. Here in the southwest of Iceland amongst this beautiful volcanic landscape.